Well, hello, I think I'm doing this correctly, but I don't see any, um, where somebody can message me. I wanna see some live messages here. There we go, hey Tony. Let's wait till a few more people come on here. Ah, hey Angie. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> hey Kat. Just gonna wait a few minutes here and let a few more people come on. Um, I will definitely be taking some questions later, um, but first I'm gonna go over um, astrophotography and how to photograph a comet because I don't know if you know, but there is a comet here right now, Comet Neowise. And um, this comet is, is very visible to the naked eye. You don't need a telescope to see it. Um, it's very bright and it's very close to the Earth. So, hey Janelle. Let a few more people come on. Um, so first, let's talk about what is a comet. So a comet is a giant ball of ice and dust. That's all it is, a big ice and dust rock out there. And uh, where do they come from? They come from what's called an Oort cloud, Oort, O-O-R-T. And it's a cloud of ice balls, basically, that is um, outside of our solar system. And the gravity from our sun pulls them in, pulls the comets out of the Oort cloud, and it does a little uh, eclipse around our sun. So um, there's some interesting things to know about the, about the comets. Um, I'll draw you a picture here. So you've got the comet. It's basically a rock of ice and dust. And then you have a tail. And comets have two tails, which is very fascinating. Why do they have two tails? Because they're made of ice and dust. So one tail is gas from the ice that's uh, melting, and then the other tail is from the dust. So the heat from the sun is uh, making the, the ice melt and it's making it um, exp sort of explode off of the uh, off of the surface of the of the comet. And hey TJ. Hey Aiton. Um, and so that explains that's why we have two tails. One is one is gas and one is dust. And because of the two tails, it also allows us to know what direction the comet is going. So if you have a comet and then the tails are going in this direction, a lot of people automatically assume that the comet is going this way, but it's actually not. The reason the tails go away from the comet is because down here is where the sun is. So it's the heat from the sun is pushing the tail away from the comet. So when you see a comet's tail swerving off this way, then we know the comet is actually going in that direction. You see there? Comet's going in this direction, the tail is going off behind it. And then we have two tails. One is usually going straight away from the sun. That's the gas tail because it's much lighter than the dust. So the dust tail usually has a curve that's trailing behind the direction and then the gas tail. And because of that, they're also different colors. So the gas tail are often blue, they're bluish in color, sometimes green. And then the dust tail is often like a brownish or a golden color. And that's just a reflection that we're seeing off of it. So that's what a comet is. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about the history, the history of astrophotography. So I got into this in the early 90s. Uh, I studied astronomy for two years in college, just out of a fun for the curiosity, the hobby of it. And um, the, what's great about this is I'm combining two of my favorite subjects, astronomy and photography. So back then, 
uh, there were two different ways to photograph astronomy or astrophotography. One was with film, which was not easy. And another way was with the first, the early digital cameras, which was a big CCD camera about this big that attached to the back of your, you took a, a 35 millimeter camera, you move the back and you attach a CCD camera to it. And it had three filters. And you literally had to take the photograph of your comet in three colors. You had to take three photographs of it, uh, red, green, and blue, RGB. And then you would put those, download three images into the computer, and then the, the first, the early Photoshop, you would combine them, and then you got a color image. And so now for, for film, the way we would uh, uh, photograph a, a comet with uh, with a film camera is we would piggyback, we would use a, a telescope and piggyback the camera to the telescope. So if you had the telescope pointing at the wherever it was, you didn't actually use the telescope to photograph the comet. You used it to, as a guiding device. So we would attach the camera to the telescope with a piggyback adapter and you would use the telescope to guide. So since the Earth, your Earth is rotating and you had to do a long exposure, uh, the pro if you use 800 ISO film for a comet, uh, the proper exposure would be about 15 minutes. So if you didn't guide it with a telescope, you would just get lines. It would just be blurry. You would get star trails, and it would be a little messy. So uh, that is how you photograph a, a comet. Um, let's see. I've got my notes here. Okay, so that's sort of the history of astrophotography. It's kind of how it started. Um, now, it's with technology, it's so easy. You literally, this comet is so bright, you could literally shoot it with your iPhone. I went out on Sunday night. I was in Malibu. There was a lot of light pollution from, from PCH. There was a lot of moisture in the air. It was not the ideal situation for photographing a comet, but I could still get a shot of the comet with my iPhone, which was really impressive. It's a bright comet and it's very close to the Earth. It is about 64 million miles away. And um, so I, I'm going to go out again tonight and this time I'm going to go out to the desert so there's no light pollution from the city. You do not white, want light pollution from the city. Light pollution from the city is really bad. Um, you can still see the comet, but it's going to be much better if you go out away from the light pollution. Um, you don't want winds, you don't want moisture from the ocean, so the beach is not good, um, and you don't want uh, any dust. So, um, the comets are, okay, so if you're going to use a camera, if you want to get the whole entire tail, because this tail is massive. Comet Neowise has a huge tail. Um, I would not shoot it with a telescope and I wouldn't shoot it with a very, with a, a very strong telephoto lens unless you want only the core of the comet. Um, I am going to shoot it with an 85 millimeter 1.2 lens. I'm going to probably shoot it wide open at 1.2. And by doing that, I can, I can use, do about a five second exposure. That's it, that's setting the ISO at 100. So that's all you need, five, at, at five seconds, you're not gonna get star trails, you're gonna get a nice start, a sharp image. Um, and at 100 ISO, there's not gonna be any grain. Absolutely, it's gonna be the minimal grain. So, um, all right, what else? So there's, there's comets. Uh, you can also photograph, uh, using the same techniques, you can photograph nebulas and galaxies. Um, a nebula is a cloud of gas and dust. Um, they are all over, the, all over the outer space. Nebulas usually take a longer exposure than a comet. Um, when I shot with film at ISO 800, a nebula, I would do about a 30-minute exposure. 
uh, galaxies. We have a galaxy called the Andromeda Galaxy, which is our closest galaxy. It's so massive you could actually see it with the naked eye if you go up into the desert or if you go up high in the mountains. Um, and when I photographed the Andromeda Galaxy, I shot it with a 45 minute exposure. So I had a camera, a film camera, piggyback to a telescope. I used a Mead LX200 eight inch telescope. And I just used it as a tracking device so I could get it sharp with no star trails. And uh, I will, this is all film. I'll scan some of these negatives and I'll post them for you later. Um, okay, so Comet Neowise was discovered by a NASA telescope. Um, you, oh, direction. So let's talk about the direction, where to find it tonight. Tonight, July 23rd, it is the closest to the Earth. 64 million miles is the closest it's going to be. Uh, you can see it with the naked eye, and you want to look west, northwest. West, northwest. Low to the horizon. Um, as soon as it gets dark, you can see it. And it is just underneath Canis Major. Canis Major is the Big Dipper. So look underneath the Big Dipper. You can't miss it. Go out someplace where it's really dark, and it's uh, it's a it's a big has a big tail. It just pops right out. So, um, what else do you want to know? Do I have any questions? How do I get questions on here? I don't know how to get questions on here, but I see people are watching. Um, I never do Facebook Live, so I need to learn how to do this. But anyways, what else is there? Camera settings, cameras to use. Um, you can use your iPhone and hold it very steady. If you can put your iPhone on a tripod with a holder, that's going to be much better. Um, if you're going to use your, your camera, use, uh, I would say, between an 85 millimeter lens and a... 135 or so if you're going to zoom if you're going to use a 200 millimeter lens you're going to get the core you're going to get just this much of the comet uh, if you want to get the whole tail which comet neowise the tail goes like this it is really big it is a huge tail and the gas tail just kind of goes straight like that so the sun will be down here, so after the sun sets, the comma will look like it's going down. The tail will be facing up. Oh, I see a question. Great. We just need to comment with questions and you read them. Ah, thanks, Angie. So cool. Um, what else is there to, to, what else do you want to know about astrophotography or photographing the comet? Tonight is the closest night. It's the best night to see it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you can take your family out. You can take your kids out somewhere dark, mountains, desert. You can see it from the beach. I, I shot it from the beach in, in, uh, in Malibu on Sunday night. Took my daughter, and it was great. Uh, we could see it. She was excited to see it. Um, it's definitely bright enough to see it. I wouldn't say it's best uh, conditions for getting great quality photography, but, but it is definitely, you can definitely see it. From there. So we went over the history of the CCD cameras, shooting an RGB film camera, piggyback telescope, comets. You know what a comet is now. Cloud of gas and dust. Um, your settings. I would put if you're going to use your camera, your DSLR, put it in manual, and and you can experiment. You can play around with it. You can experiment. Um, the best time to see it tonight is you can see it right after it gets dark until about, uh, I would say about midnight. Then it's going to go below the horizon. So, I mean, it's, it's perfect. It's ideal situation. You know, um, as soon as it gets dark, you can see it and then you can follow it as it goes down to the horizon. Um, best time, the best time is probably going to be 11 o'clock when it's very dark, the sun is all the way down. Um, 
Yeah, so when I studied uh, astro, uh, astronomy in college, my astronomy instructor said, in the, on the first day, he said, there are three things to know about astronomy. So first thing, nothing ever happens. This is what he says, nothing ever happens. Number two, when it does happen, it happens on the other side of the earth when you're not there and you don't get to see it. The third thing, when it does happen on your side of the earth, it's cloudy. And then you don't get to see it. But that was just his sense of humor. It was kind of funny. Hey, Alex. So, Alex, we're talking about uh, astronomy and astrophotography. The comet Neowise is here uh, right now. It's closest to the earth today, tonight. July 23rd is the best time to see it. Um, it the direction is west northwest it's underneath the big dipper you can see it with the naked eye uh you can see it um you can photograph it with an iphone you can definitely photograph it with a dslr camera use a tripod for sure use a tripod i recommend trying about a about a five second exposure you can experiment you five ten second exposure iso 100 um and uh, go out somewhere where it's dark, away from the city. You, the light pollution really kills it. Um, go to the desert, go to the mountains, go somewhere where uh, you can um, just get away from the lights from the city and you can see it's really great. Um, Comet Neowise is here. This will be my fourth comet that I've photographed over the years, Comet Hayakutake in 1997, Comet, Comet Hale-Bopp in 96, and Comet, Halley's Comet in 80, I think it was 86. Yeah, yeah. Halley's Comet was 86. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, what else? Do you have any questions for me? What do you wanna know about photographing about photographing astronomy, photographing the comet tonight, or just viewing the comet. Oh, binoculars are great. If you have some big binoculars, uh, the comet looks amazing through binoculars. Um, what else? What else do you wanna know about photographing comet Neowise? Hey, Craig. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi, everybody. So we're talking about how to photograph a comet. Um, how to photograph astronomy. It's really great that we have the technology that we have now because uh, we can literally take a picture with your iPhone or with a digital camera, DSLR camera. And this comet is so bright. It is so beautiful. Uh, it has two colors. It has like, it's like a greenish blue um, and a gold tail. And it has two tails. So if you missed the beginning of this, the reason it has two tails, one tail is gas and one tail is dust. So the dust tail is a little more golden or brown and the gas tail is like a greenish blue. The gas tail is lighter than the dust, so gas goes directly away from the sun. And the dust tail goes, kind of trails back away from the direction of the comet. The comet, when you're looking at it to the west, northwest tonight, the comet's direction is actually going to the left but it's going very slow. You won't be able to see it, it move um, in one night. So the, the heat, the, 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 the radiation from the sun pushes the, the tail away from the comet. And that's why it looks like the comet is going down, but it's actually not going down. It's actually going to the left. What else? What else do we want to know? Is that it? Um, Go see it tonight, tell your friends. It's pretty awesome, it's a very beautiful, 
uh, sight to see. We don't get these very often. This is the only time we'll see this comet in this lifetime because this comet does not come back, come back to the Earth for, if I remember correctly, it's 264 years, every 264 years or something like that. So each time the comet comes around the Earth, it's smaller because, because the sun, it's, it's literally, the tail is literally bits and pieces of the comet coming off. So, so it's, it's, it's it, literally the surface of the, of the comet is exploding. And it, so it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Ah, uh, here's another interesting factor. So when all of these bits and pieces of the comet, the, the ice and rocks and dust is coming off, it's leaving a trail because the comet is in a, is in a uh, ellipse around the sun. Um, now the earth, we're going around the sun too. So eventually we will go through that path that the comet left. And that's how we get a really great uh, meteor storm. Is when we go through that, the leftovers from that comet will get a great meteor storm. So depending on uh, where, we have to look, I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm not sure exactly, um, I'm not sure exactly when we will go through the path that this comet left, but this comet will is leaving a a trail of dust and rocks and ice in the outer space so then when the earth goes through that we will get a really beautiful meteor storm so this will actually be a new meteor storm for us so hey matt hey marina exposure time recommended great question okay so um, definitely put your camera on a tripod and it also depends on your lens. So I will tell you, I'm gonna be using an, uh, an 85 millimeter lens and I'm gonna have it wide open at 1.2. So now not all lenses can open all the way up to 1.2. Often lenses can only open up to 2.8 or 4.0. I highly recommend you open your lens all the way up and um, I would experiment with exposure time. At 1.2, I did a five second exposure and it was beautiful. Um, that's with the ISO set at uh, 100. So you can also experiment with that. If you have a lens that only opens to 4.0, then, then I, would, I would push that ISO up to like 800, maybe even 1600. Uh, the higher you go with ISO, you're going to get more grain. It's going to be grainier. So try to stick down. I, I like to go at 100, open the lens all the way up with the fastest lens that I have. And, um, and that's how I'm going to get a nice sharp picture. So I see a whole bunch of new people came on here. Welcome. We're talking about photographing the comet Neowise, which is at its closest to the Earth tonight. Uh, July 23rd. Uh, and it's 64 million miles from the Earth, which is very close. And it's a big comet and it's super bright. It has a beautiful bright tail. Uh, look to the west, northwest. Just, it's very low to the horizon. Um, it's underneath the Big Dipper. So look under the Big Dipper tonight. Um, go out somewhere, go away from the city. Get away from the light pollution that the city gives off. Uh, the desert is great. You can see it from the beach. I photographed it on Sunday night uh, from Malibu and it was great, but it was an ideal situation for photography because there was a lot of moisture coming up from the ocean and there was still some light pollution, pollution from PCH. So, um, does anybody have any questions for me? Who's gonna go see, hey Travis, who's gonna go see the, uh, the comet tonight? Give me some questions. What do you want to know? I'll tell you, I started photographing astronomy in 1994 uh, out of a hobby. I photographed, this is my fourth comet, and uh, I photographed galaxies and nebulas, and um, it's a lot easier now than it used to be. 
Now, uh, the way it used to be is you needed a telescope. Now you don't need a telescope. Um, because we would use a telescope to attach the camera and use the telescope as a guiding mechanism um, to, to get a long exposure without getting star trails and without getting a blurry image. So, give me some questions, guys. What else do you want to know about seeing the comet tonight? Do you know what a comet is? A comet is a ball of gas and dust, or ice. It's a ball of ice and dust, but as it, as it goes around the sun, it, it, it turns into like gas and dust, like bursts off of the comet. And that's what the tail is. The tail is gas and dust exploding off of the, off of the comet, off of the rock. So, oh, so here's something interesting. Uh, so in the 90s, um, I don't know how many of you were into this in the 90s. Yes, I'm going to take pictures and I will post them. I already shot it on, on Sunday, but it wasn't, uh, it, I, there was a lot, of, a lot of light pollution and moisture from the beach. So I'm going to go to the desert tonight and I'll shoot it and I'll post those probably tomorrow. So um, a great comet, hale -Bopp, in 90. Six uh, was going around. We'll never see that comet again because as it was going around the sun, uh, it was going away from Jupiter. Here, I'll draw you a little picture. So here's the comet going away, and here's Jupiter, which the gravity pull from Jupiter was so strong that it broke the comet up into pieces. Comet's going this way, gravity is pulling this way. So it literally busted the comet up in a bunch of pieces. And then the gravity from Jupiter pulled the pieces of the comet back and they literally slammed into Jupiter. And Jupiter spins really fast. It's this very fast spinning planet. I believe one day is 10 hours. And so we could watch through telescopes, we watched these pieces of the broken comet slam into Jupiter and you could see expo explosions in Jupiter as it spun around. It was, it was amazing. We literally, this was on the news and everything, we were watching this. We watched this live through telescope from the mountains. I hope I'm getting the comet right. I've seen the... I think it was Comet hale -Bopp that did that. Um, so this comet technically could do that. I mean, any, any comet, as it goes past all of our planets and it goes pa past our sun, they could break apart because they're very fragile. A, 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 a comet is just like a snowball. It's like a giant snowball with dust and stuff. Um, where does a comet come from? Well, in outer space, there's moisture out there, and the moisture and dust, it all collects, collects up with gravity in the little, little balls. There is actually a cloud called the Oort cloud, O-O-R-T. It's called the Oort cloud, and the Oort cloud is way out beyond our solar system. And it's just rocks and lots and lots of ice balls and then this, our sun, the gravity from our sun, every once in a while will pull one of these ice balls out of the Oort cloud and it'll do a nice ellipse around our sun. And then we have comets. Give us a nice show. The name of this comet that's here now is called Neowise. Neowise. It's one, one, that's the name. It's not two, two words. Uh, Neowise was discovered by uh, NASA. Na one of NASA's telescopes discovered it. So um, what's cool is that a lot of people used to, a lot of comet hunters, I think there's, I'm sure there's still a lot of people still hunting for them because if you can, if you get to discover a comet, you get to name it after yourself. So like Comet Hayakutake was discovered by a Japanese astronomer uh, from his own personal telescope in his backyard in the 90s. Um, 
I, I assume it's a little bit uh, not so, not as easy now to discover one before NASA's technology finds one before you, but I guess it's still possible. So anyway, so there you have it. That is how to photograph a comet. Um, how to do astrophotography, and uh, I'll be out there shooting it tonight out somewhere out in the desert. I'm just going to go drive and find a place. I'm going to find a place that's dark. I'm going with another another uh, photographer buddy of mine, Matt Kelly. We're going to bring our cameras and telescopes and have a, a star party, and uh, I will be uh, posting some photos tomorrow. So... All right, thank you guys for watching. This was really awesome. This is a lot of fun. Text me if you have any questions. And uh, I hope you get to go see the comet tonight. Enjoy it. Bye.